All right, so we'll be, we're going to read the entire uh, chapter. It's 24 verses, so Psalms chapter 139. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought to far off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot obtain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall follow me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you form my inward parts, you cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that, my, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would stay, slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men. For they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this morning I want to talk to you about a very simple subject. I want to talk to you about some simple words that we all need to know and that we all need to be reminded of today. And that is this. God loves you. God loves you. No matter who you are today, no matter who you are, God loves you. Now, I know I can't hear you this morning. I know that those of you that are on the other side of the road, I can't hear you. But here's what I want you to do. Right there in your car this morning, I want you to say this with me. I want you to say, God loves me. All right? One, two, three. We're going to say it. Ready? One, two, three. God loves me. God loves me. I want you to understand that this morning. I want you to understand that God loves you today. It seems like sometimes in life we just need a simple reminder of the truth. And this is the truth today. The truth is that God loves you. God loves you. We hear it all the time though. You hear people talk about it and you hear it all the time. That God loves you. You hear God is love. And a lot of times we just take it for granted. We, we just take it for granted that, oh, God is love. That's what those Christian people down there at the church say. And that, you know, God loves me. But how do we say? How do we believe? How do we stand firm and say, God loves me when there are difficult times? When there are difficult times in our life and we look around and we say, where is God's love? How do I know God loves me? In the lives, in the moments of our lives, when things become overwhelming. Maybe you're sitting at home alone, your head in your hand thinking to yourself, well, where's God now? Where's God's love? Maybe there's tears spilling down your face. Maybe you've lost your job, lost a friend, lost a loved one. Maybe things aren't going your way. Maybe you've had more than a rough day. Maybe you've had a rough week or a rough, rough month. How do you say, God loves me? Maybe you've had a friend or something or someone hurt you or someone in your family hurt you. How do you say, God loves me? Maybe you've messed up in your life and you're looking around and you say, how can God love a person like me? I want to tell you this this morning. God loves you. God is a God of love and He loves you. I want to assure all of you this morning that no matter how much you doubt, no matter how much you run, no matter how much you may not like God, 
God still loves you. This morning, I want to keep it simple for us. I want us all to leave here today with this simple understanding. God loves you today. God loves you in a way that none of us can comprehend. I'm going to try to help us comprehend God's love this morning. But I want you to understand that God loves you. You see, we must understand this truth of God's love and how much He loves you so that you can draw closer to God. As we live in this world that is full of hatred, full of immorality, knowing that God loves you helps you make a stand. It helps you stand strong in your faith in these hard times. And you can be a witness to the world around you knowing that God loves you today. And God loves you. So I want to just give you a few things this morning to show you how much God loves you and to show you how God's love comes to you. The first thing I want you to understand this morning about God's love is this. It is a personal love for you. Psalm 139, 1-4 said, O Lord, You have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehended my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, You know it all together. God loves you in a personal way. A lot of people look at God and they think God is this person up in the the sky that looks down and He doesn't care, He doesn't know everybody, and He doesn't love everyone. The Bible tells us this morning that God loves you and He knows you today. He knows who you are better than you know who you are today. God said, I know you're sitting down, I know you're rising up, I know your thoughts, I know all about you. You see, God's love is a personal love for you today. It is a love that knows everything about you. It is a love that knows every detail about your life. This is the God that loves you today. One who knows you better than you know yourself. He knows every situation in your life. He knows every thought in your life. He knows every pain in your life right now. And He loves you. He has never abandoned anyone. He holds each of His precious creations in His hands and He says, I love you. And He calls you by name. He knows you today. The Bible goes on in Psalms and it says, You form my inward parts. You cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. All that my soul, all that my soul knows very well. You see, God formed us. He loved us from the beginning. He knows our past. He knows our ways. He knows our thoughts. And His thoughts to us are precious. And the Bible says, if we take just a little time to understand His love, that our soul will cry out and our soul will know. And it will be precious to us. Remember this this morning. God loves You. Put your name in there. God loves you personally today. It is a personal love that He loves you today. The next thing we can understand about God's love is this. It is an unconditional love. It is an unconditional love. What does that mean? Well, that means that it's not like most of the love in our life. Most of the love in our life today, it's conditional. That means that you have to do something to be loved so, I'll give you some examples. You know, we receive praise or appreciation at work or at school. Why? Because we've done something good. That is not an unconditional love. That is a conditional love. You know, your parents. You know, a lot of times, parents, it seems like we only show our love, our appreciation whenever children do something great. That would be a conditional love. We're liked and popular because maybe we have a great outgoing personality. Maybe we have a good smile. Maybe we can speak in public really good. So people seem to love us or like us. That is conditional. There are times when we're surprised in our lives at how conditional love is. When the hard times hit. When things happen. When trouble comes. And all of a sudden the love is no longer there because... They're looking at us and we can't provide what we have provided in the past. There are times in our lives when we get surprised or blindsided by conditional love. But let me tell you this this morning. God's love is not conditional. God's love is unconditional. What does that mean? That means that God loves you no matter what. 
God loves you without any conditions upon it. God loves you today no matter where you've been, no matter where you're coming from, no matter what you're thinking right now. God still loves you. His love has been there for you from the beginning. Listen to what the Bible says. In Romans 5.8 it says, God demonstrated His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What does that mean? That means we didn't do anything to earn His love. That means He loved us anyway. That means He loved us when we were sinners, when we were, when we were dirty, when we were full of sin in our lives. God still loved us. We didn't have to do anything to earn it. And I'm here to tell you today, God loves you. And you can't do more to earn His love. His love is already there. It would be conditional love if you had to earn it. But you don't. His love has always been there and always will be. But our problem today is we see through our eyes. We see through the eyes of man today. And we see God's love as conditional love. We can't understand a love that's not based on us having to do something. And God says, my love is greater than that. My love has been for you, there for you since the beginning. Since I formed you in the womb, my love has been for there for you. And my love will continue to be there for you. That means that God loves us just like we are. Even in times of our failings, even in times of our sin, God still loves us. We don't understand this. But we ask ourselves, how can God love someone that's in sin? How can God love someone that's turned their back on Him? Those of you that are Christians here this morning, those of you that have called upon the Lord as your Savior, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe God loved you before you asked Him to forgive you of your sins? Do you believe that God loved you before you confessed and before you asked Him to be your Lord and Savior? Yes, He did. We know it. The Bible tells us He did. So why would He love you any less? Or why would He love that person who hasn't called upon Him as Savior any less yet? You see, God's love is unconditional. He would not love you any less than when He did when you were a sinner without forgiveness. He loves you today. And this is what we need to understand. It is an unconditional love that will not leave us or abandon us, which brings me to my next point. God's love doesn't abandon us. God's love does not, does not leave us. When we come into those difficult times, man fails us. Man goes and can leave, but God will not. You see, a lot of times when we come to difficult times in our lives, we look around and we point our finger up and we say, God, you're not here. You don't love me. In reality, it's us that we've left God behind. You see, it's not that God isn't taking care of us. It's not that God isn't loving us. It's not that God has abandoned us. Remember, the Bible says God has planned out our lives carefully. He knows all of our thoughts, our sitting, our coins, our up, our comings, all of it. He knows it all. And God has planned each and every one of our lives carefully. He knows it all. And His ultimate plan is for us to come to Him for salvation and for us to draw closer to Him. And you see, in our times of trouble, He's there. But are we willing to go to Him and rely on Him? You see, He sent Jesus Christ into the world so that we could be saved. He showed His love to us through Jesus Christ so that we could be saved because we cannot do it on our own. This is a tremendous gift of love that God has given all of us. And we can obtain this mercy and we can obtain this grace through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4, 6 let us says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. But do we do that? Do we understand that God's love is eternal? Do we go to the throne of grace in our times of need? Or do we point our finger to God in heaven and say, you're not giving me what I want when I want, so I'm out of here. Is that what you're saying to God? You see, it's in these times of trouble, it's in these times of trouble that we rely on God and we understand how much He loves us. He told Joshua, as it was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Notice this doesn't mean that the hard times disappear. This means that you'll find the strength, the courage, and the grace to get through. Why? Because God is with you and God loves you with an internal, eternal, unconditional love. God has not abandoned you today. God has not left you today. So don't abandon Him. 
Don't abandon His love for you today. He's not going to leave you. You don't leave Him today. You see, that's our reaction. We understand that when hard times come, we think that God's supposed to help us get through it or go around it. But God's saying, I'm still here. I won't give you all your heart's desire, God says, but I will help you through every section, everything that ha happens in your life. You see, God loves you today, personally, unconditionally, and He will not leave you, and He will not forsake you, and He will never abandon you with His love. His love will always be there. So when I tell you this morning, God loves you today, know that it's true. No matter where you're at, God will not leave you or abandon you. When I was working on this sermon, I had this sermon finished before a lot of the events that have happened over the last couple of days have happened. And as I was thinking about this sermon and I was looking at a lot of the events that have happened in the last few days, I was thinking this is a good lesson for our entire nation. As I was reading over my notes and as I was looking at what's going on, I was thinking that it's appropriate that we talk about God's love today because I feel like as a, as a nation, we have forgotten God's love for us. Our first reaction, as we can see, is retribution and hatred so many times in our country. We're quick to judge. We're quick to grow angry. Why? I believe it's because we've forgotten that God loves us and that because of His love, we have forgiveness. And because of His love, we have hope and we have help. When we understand that God loves us and we understand the love that God has given us, it should move us to love others and not hate others. When we understand that God's love, we understand that God's love for us doesn't abandon us. It helps us understand what He has done for us and helps us understand what God is willing to do for all those in our world. It helps us not judge because we understand how we were before we met Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and how we still are after we've met Him. You see, you and I cannot love, we cannot get along unless we accept God's love for us. Let that love grow strong in our life and then pass it on to others through Jesus Christ. You see, without His love in our life, we can only show anger and hatred. But with Jesus Christ, we can show love to others. I believe we as Christians, we need to be the ones on the forefront showing others that God is love and that God loves no matter what. But if you don't believe me, I'm going to end today by sharing with you some verses from God's Word. And I'll let His Word have the final saying today on how much He loves you and how we need to be with God's love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 says this, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifest toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through Him. But God, this is Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. That was Ephesians 2, 4 and 5. Romans chapter 8. For I am persuaded, this is Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then finally, one verse that we all know that you were all probably expecting me to read at the very beginning when I talk about God's love. That is John 3.16. But I want us to read John 3.14-17. through 17. I want us to read it all here. John 3, beginning in verse 14. And as, Moses, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. You see, God's Word is the final authority. And God's Word tells us that God loved us so much He sent His Son. That God's love 
cannot be separated from us once we have it. There is nothing that can separate us from God. God's love was manifested toward us that while we were still in our sin, He sent Jesus Christ. You see, God's Word tells us this morning that God loves us no matter what. And I want us all to remember that today. Don't leave here today. Don't leave here this morning until you understand that God loves you in a way you have never been loved before. That God loves you no matter where you're at in life. And He wants to have a personal relationship with you today. He wants to love you in a personal way. He wants to love you as His child today. He wants to love you as His, his son, as His daughter today. He wants to love you in an unconditional way today, in a way that you never have known. Today, I pray, I ask you, don't let your sin, don't let your pride, don't let your foolishness keep you from His love today. His love is there. You just have to reach out and take it. Don't let anything get in the way of that. You must understand today that we are all sinners, that you and I are sinners. Understand that because of that, and because of God's love for us, that we must have Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. Why did He die? Because of God's love for us. And we must come to Him today, accept His love, confess our sins before Him, and acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior today, and feel the full force of God's love in our life today. And as we do that, and we understand that God loves us no matter, no matter what, we can then take that love and we can pass it on to others. And you see, here's the great thing about God's love. We don't have to meet in this building. We don't have to meet inside. We don't have to get out of our cars this morning to feel God's love. We don't have to have an altar call to understand God's love. We don't have to have you come down front and pray to know God's love in your life. God said, I'll meet you wherever you are. That means He'll meet you in your car. That means He'll meet you in your house. No matter where you're at, God says, I will meet you there because I love you. So this morning, as I close in prayer, I ask that you pray. Ask God to fill you with His love. Ask God to show you His love this morning. Confess whatever it is that is keeping you personally from God's love. He still loves you, but you may have something that is keeping you from loving Him. Confess that today. Ask Him for forgiveness today. Right there in your car, wherever you're at, you can do it. And He will shine down His love on you. And you will feel a love greater than you ever have known. And know this, we all make mistakes. You may pray this morning, you may feel God's love. You may go tomorrow to work or wherever, and you may make a mistake and you may say, oh, I just blew it. God doesn't love me anymore. Yes, He does. He never stops loving you and never will stop loving you. We must understand that today. So I ask that you pray today, right there where you're at, and ask God to show you His love. Let, he, let you feel His love in your presence, in his, in his life today. And because of that love, let that love shine through to others because we're just like everyone else. We were nothing and we are nothing without Jesus Christ in our life. And God loved us so much that He sent Jesus Christ for us. And without Jesus, we're nothing. We must understand that today and pass that message on to all those that are around us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you know us and that you've loved us unconditionally. And Lord, we thank you that you'll never leave us no matter how bad we mess up. No matter how far we've sunk, no matter how far we've run, Father, we praise you today that you're there ready and wait, waiting with your arms wide open, ready for love, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning that every person that is hearing this message, Lord, will feel your love today, will understand that you love them today, and will take hold of that love, Lord. And Lord, that we'll all come before you and know and acknowledge that we're nothing without you. Know and acknowledge that we have to have your love in our lives today. And Father, I pray that every person here today will hear you, will feel your love, will know your presence in their life, Lord, and will make your love known to others. Father, we can only do these things through your power and through your strength. And Father, today we ask that you give it to us. Father, just lavish your love down upon us. And Lord, as we leave this place today, let us continue to feel your love and your presence in our lives every moment of every day. Father God.
In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming out today. As you leave, just a reminder, God loves you. Tell yourself that several times a day. God loves me. No matter where I'm, what I'm doing, God loves me. God loves you today. Take that message, remember that message, and spread that message to others that God is love like we've never known before. See you all next Sunday morning. Thank you.